Hey everybody, live right now, I'm going to get a, a live look into the insight of my writing process, so feel free to leave a comment below. Got the big board set up. Today's uh, keyword is live, as in uh, live from New York, it's Saturday night. That's already hilarious, so I think we'll light up things a little bit. Uh, got my chalkboard wallpaper big help got a pen neon green yeah not bad it's a chalk pen you know how it is and uh, put on a little music Put on a little Stan Getz and Bill Evans Pandora. Got one request for a Bernie Sanders joke. Don't know if it quite works that way. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, turn down the music a little. The word is uh, live. Put down today is the 17th instead of the 18th. That's the, you know the day I do it. <clears throat> Gotta stay hydrated, drinking a gallon of water a day. Oh man, I don't know how Beyonce does it. Well, she's a millionaire. Live, that makes me think of uh, a live performance. I like to do is I like to make these word balloons and branch out. Performance live from New York. Now it's Saturday night. What else? Of course, the opposite being live is being dead. It's very scary to a lot of people. Nobody likes to think about it. Scary forever. Gone. I'm dying up here. Actually, we can bring that back. I used to have a uh, joke I liked where I would say, if a joke bombed, I would say, I'm dying up here, and I'd point to an attractive female audience member and say, can I get some mouth to mouth? So we'll put that in our bring back section. We have uh, I usually divide the joke board up into three sections. Main board which is the word bubble, um, actually four sections. Ideas, which are where premises and fully formed jokes go. The joke hospital, now uh, the joke hospital is where jokes that are almost quite there, there's something you really like about them but they're not quite there, you put them and hopefully they get better in the joke hospital. Uh, Larry David well, infamously had a a joke hospital for Seinfeld and he put the words masturbation episode up there and then one day 
snapped his fingers the next day television history I actually usually wipe down my wet board with a sponge sponges look a little pink today and uh, I also have some wet wipes so for example one thing we can do you are booked today I was booked today I was on a fantastic show a funeral show for my best friend Stephen DeSiena still with us Run by Chandler Moses and Alec Lambert. It was great. But I'll throw this baby up there. <sighs> what are you going to do, huh? Anyway, right back to it. Live reminds me. Live. Live a little. I know Tig Notaro did album Live. About her cancer. That was very funny. Maybe we can steal some of those jokes. Oh, I also uh, tweeted a joke today that I really liked. It's Google Plus. My jokes are killing on Google Plus. They have a lot of circular approval. Let me take a look at the comments. Not a bad video. I see some familiar facelifts. One thing that I like to do is uh, make sure that you always add an extra number because you're never done writing. You're never done. Live from New York, it's Saturday night, dead funeral. Fun and funeral, right? You ever hear that one? The funeral and the what is it? Procession, hearse. A lot of fun stuff can be done in a funeral. Procession, hearse. That makes me think of horse. Hearse, a horse, funeral, fun, casket, coffin. I like that idea. I like the idea of something being done in a coffin. <sighs> now, the last show I did was in a coffin. My career is not going well. Mm -hmm. Tombstone. I got a pizza, sir. Perform a live performance, the theater. I'm dying up here. The idea will go into some career based stuff. You know what I like the idea of? I'm starting to think. Ideas are starting to percolate. I like the idea people go to a hospital. But I like the idea of a heart rate flat one. <laughs> I like missing presumed dead. I think that flows well. My career is missing presumed dead. Or maybe that that punchline is missing presumed dead. So I think I like that one. Uh, not all ideas are stage ready, keep in mind. So I think after... Put a B next to that one because that joke's after a bomb. Now you have to be careful. One thing I've learned 
is that if you tell too many jokes after a bomb, the audience wants you to bomb. Now, usually that's not a problem for me, but after a bomb you say, that punchline was missing, presumed dead. Or, my career is missing, presumed dead. Eh. My agent told me my career is missing, presumed dead. Presume, presumed is a very funny word. I like the zuh sound. Missing, presumed dead. Now, one thing that's different than the ideas than the bring backs in the joke hospital is I write down the entire joke word for word because that's sort of sort of gives me a feeling for how long the joke's going to be, how it feels that punchline was missing, presumed dead. Might have to sell that joke a little. Career's dead, missing, presumed dead, fatal. Terminal. It's a little dark today, huh? some funny death jokes that I've heard. I still can't let go of that coffin idea. Coffin it up. Coffin sounds like a coffin. My career is not going well. The last time I told a joke, someone threw flowers on me. I don't know if that joke makes sense. My career is not going well. The last time I told a joke, someone threw flowers on me. I'll write that down. Maybe I have to sell that. <sighs> I just wrote you are sell. You are is something I write called unrelated. Sometimes I'll have an idea in my head, just not appropriate. My career is not going well. The last time I told a joke, someone threw flowers at me. People might interpret that a couple different ways. Someone threw a wreath on me. What do they call them? Wreaths? Wreath? The last time I performed, someone threw flowers on me. And not feeling it so far. Actually, I think I'm going to put down, put on an album now instead of Pandora. Another reminder in the bring back. I thought of a pretty funny joke that I liked. Uh, more of a tweet.
the tweet was something like uh, Twilight Zone, except instead of the guy being good at billiards and he has to challenge people forever, he's a roast battler. I think that'll relate to all the hip roast battle kids. Start put on put on an album back in a second. Put on an album right now. Uh, it's by Eric Tag. But besides that, uh, one good thing I like about writing with albums is that a lot of albums that are like uh, 60 to 80 minutes long, I listen to some poppier stuff, and uh, that gives you a good sense of how much writing you've done when the album's up. You did more than an hour of writing, which is a lot more than some people do, so it's another good way. Let me turn up the volume a little. Well, Lucas Kaiser, you're some live wire in the comments. I appreciate the support. Yeah, the flowers joke I'm not married to. So they throw flowers at the end of a good show. Yeah, exactly. That's too much. But hey, it's there, you know? The um, for Also, I wear very loose-fitting clothing. and I, I don't want to scare any of the ladies here, but uh, usually I alternate between taking my shirt on and off to regulate my body temperature. But anyway... Um, uh, I was listening to a Gilbert Godfrey podcast with Dave Attell, and he said that one thing that writing really does is it gets all the garbage out. And so sometimes you don't get a lot of good ideas, but you do get a lot of bad ideas out, and that's very useful. So I got 15 viewers. That ain't bad. I appreciate that. I'm trying to unwrap a halls. Oh boy, really helps my comedic voice. Got to protect my golden instrument. And also my voice. Oh, man. You know what? I got some fresh ones right here. What am I doing with the pocket? I've got to work on the main idea a little. Live performance. I do like the idea of selling. Like an oversell. Some of you wrestling fans. procession. How about this? <laughs> okay. So the idea is that, you know how when you drive, I hope this isn't too, when you drive to a show, or excuse me, when you drive from a funeral, you all have the lights on. When an audience drives to my shows, they always put the lights on. <sighs> Worked on the main idea a bit more. Ugh. Jonathan Katz is one of my favorites. He tells one of my favorite jokes. I uploaded it to my Instagram the other day. He says, uh, I have bad instincts. So the other day, Lauren Michaels said, I'd love to have, to have you on Saturday Night Live. I said, any other night. <laughs> That's my bread and butter night. What a great show. Career is missing, presumed dead. The USO show, Lucas Kaiser mentioned. That's not bad. recently for a USO show my punchline no my career is missing presumed dead <clears throat> thanks Lucas I think I'll write that one down I actually have a joke that I like um, 
And I kind of thought maybe I can bring it back. It's like, I asked to perform for the soldiers. They said they've already been through enough. people know what a USO show is. I'd like to think they do. That's not a bad joke. Thanks, Lucas. If you can hear the music that well, I tried not to have it overpower. I ask a lot of things in my career. soldiers. They told me they've been through enough. Well, I love to know who they is. I'm also always a little skeptical if a joke is longer than two of these, two of these lines. I asked if I could perform for the soldiers. They told me they'd been through enough. I'd say these two jokes are open mic ready. I seem presumed dead. I like the idea of, of mixing a comedy show with a funeral. I have some jokes that I really love here in the joke hospital. One of them is, um, when I met my agent, I told him, excuse me, when I met my, uh, this is why it's in the hospital. Before I met my agent, he told me he was a media distributor. When I met him, he was passing out AM New York. Now, I guess they don't do that anymore or something. I've, I've, the joke is more missed than hit, and I think that joke is very funny. Got a joke here in the joke hospital that I think I brought out. The um, uh, you do this joke at a bar, maybe or a coffee shop. You say, "I asked out two women to be at this bar at the exact same date, the exact same time, but it worked out because one of them stood me up and the other said no." Now that's the one punchline. The other punchline was, "Good thing they both said no." 
Now the first punchline is kind of funnier all around, but it's longer, which I usually don't care for. Post irony. Actually, I think I'm going to tweet that one tomorrow. My jokes. Um, a lot of people ask me if my jokes are post irony, but I think they're post waffle crisp. Come on, that's that's great. One time somebody called me out, actually I said post raisin bran, and they were like, it's Kellogg's that makes raisin, they both make raisin bran, okay, you know, God, I hope that guy's dead. I always make sure to take a photo of these every night, and I log them into my computer and back them up, you don't want to, I haven't been lucky enough not to lose a day of work yet, but I almost did. The hospital bills. Hospital bills are expensive. The heart rate monitor. Old people. Oh, you know what? I have a joke I can bring back that I really like. A lot of it is bringing back. You know, sometimes the, the jokes go into the ether. And either they work or they don't. Hey, all right. They go into the ether, and either they work or they don't. Just write down ether for now. A little unrelated. I should probably have an unrelated section. Should have written down faster when I was thinking about it. I can't remember the joke. Oh, yeah. The joke is, uh, sometimes when you're a fat guy like me, you get tricked into doing shows. I did a show at this place because I thought it was called Memorial Sloan Catering. It was a hospital. Ugh. I, I'm scared people won't know where that place is. Certainly not out of the New York area. Here's to you. Check the comments. <laughs> um, the music is by a guy named Eric Tagg E-R-I-G-T-A-G-G -G -G. Um, he sang a lot of songs with Lee Retenoir who uh, is an amazing guitar player so you can look him up E-R-I-G-T-A-G-G -G -G. that's for Ben Kissel uh, my buddy Andrew you know this is how comedy slow it's not an overnight process uh, <laughs> not like my ex uh, I'll write that one down too I like that Learning about women. It's an overnight process. Yeah, especially my ex. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, so, I've been selling so many of my jokes. Uh, A lot of the best writing is done staring at the wall. But hey, you know, that's Tinder. Live a little. Open up. I like that. Open up. Go outside. We got one request for a Bernie Sanders joke. I don't know if that's very topical. Even though I mean it is topical. I'm saying a little overly topical. If you have any ideas, let me know. You know, I appreciate it. I think it goes without saying that this was inspired by Bob Ross's The Joy of Painting. Good place to take out your frustrations. I can't wait to get home from an open mic or from a show and write this down. <clears throat> Me? 
Oh, I like this joke a lot. In the joke hospital, someone said, Guy told me after a show, don't think about quitting. Just do it. Do it. Do it. Dead and buried. Oh, I already wrote buried. Hospital. Bills, expensive, heart rate. Stuck in a bed. I had my gallbladder removed. I lost a lot of weight from that. That was a pound right there. Formed recently for Comic Strip Live and it flatlined. You know what? I'll bring back a good joke. Speaking of Comic Strip Live, that reminds me of a, a joke my buddy really likes. career's not going well. My agents got me performing on the Strip. Yeah, the Gaza Strip. That would be a bad place to perform. It's for Comic Strip Live and it's flatlined. Anybody heard any good jokes lately? By the way, I'm filming this directly on. I can't quite see the comments unless I go around, so sorry if that's inconvenient for any of you. a joke that I don't do. I only do it during a mic if they hate on notes. I go, I got your notes right here. They're in my pocket. It's certainly not applicable anywhere else, but hey, there's a joke for everything. Sometimes there's jokes that I write just to cheer people up at open mics so I can do actual material. I'll start off and I'll say something like, uh, it's nice to be here. I'm working on my Comedy Central half minute. Thanks for staying till the end of my career is actually a good one that I, I uh, you can use for anything, which I appreciate. You can't use it. Whew. Parked in front of a hydrant in Staten Island. Well, I like to make fun of Staten Island. That's always a crowd pleaser. Been presumed dead. Funeral casket coffin. Procession hearse. Ugh, dead. Starting to fill the wall up. That's always good. Dreamwalking along with me. This is a great song, Dreamwalking. This was the 
name of the album. So even if you didn't learn anything about comedy, you learned a little something about jazz fusion. Prayer cards? See, nobody knows what a comment card is. They don't hand out comment cards, they hand out card. They don't hand out comment cards, they hand out prayer cards. I'll settle and have that joke be stage ready. It might be more of a tweet first. Dead heart attack, probably the way I'm going to go out. Coffin, coffin. My punchline career performed for the. Yeah, see, flowers is is no good. But that's okay. Yeah, starting to get a little late. Feeling like I'm hitting a wall, but that's okay. We can push through. really funny uh, slice of life thing happened. My uh, grandmother unfortunately passed away. But what are you going to do? But uh, they were talking about the inheritance and um, my father was going, hey, this is uh, taxable. We want to let you know um, how much of it you, you can reserve. Uh, you can have held back for taxes. Now there are some downsides to this. And I said, Grandma died. And <laughs> I got a big laugh. But uh, Miss your grandma. Been walking along with me. I know you're dream walking in heaven, grandma. Religion's a touchy subject. In New York, most people don't seem to be. Ugh. Gotta get some more stuff out of this. Man, how can I write with this great music? Get yourself out there. How about life support? That joke is on life support. Life support. Support, helping. No one there. No one there. Sounds like my audiences. back a joke that I really like the uh, didn't hit as well but I think maybe this could actually go in the joke hospital once it's already there
another chip that I really like. Uh, I got my face on the wall of a comedy club. Yeah, my check bounced. I like that idea. I, mean, I don't know about a comedy club that takes checks. Maybe reality checks. My check bounced. Ooh, that's tough. I got my face on the wall of a comedy club. Least wanted. Wanted for murder. Killing it. on the wall. Prayer card. I like the idea of, of a funeral procession breaking out during one of my shows. Something like that. What do they do? They pass out prayer? What do they do at funerals? They go up and they start praying. Career is not going well. I performed in a show recently. People went to the front and started kneeling. You kind of have to do this or the joke doesn't make sense. You know a show's not going well when you're telling jokes and people go up and start kneeling. You know a joke... Uh, you know... You know... Well, I'm going to bring back another really good joke that I like. This is a great album. Pen's running a little low, but hey, that's nice. Was only joking too, Mr. Joking. This this could work. This joke, I like it. I have to sort of explain that one. Oh, my, my act is dead. <laughs> so this is three lines of better deliver. See what's going on in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching and sticking around. <laughs> oh, I have to be careful. Oh, jeez. I just realized the um, the whole time the fully formed ideas weren't being shown. Shame on me. Yeah, 
I'm going to try to align it. Oh, boy. There we go. These are the fully formed jokes. That punchline was missing, presumed dead, which is kind of the germ for a joke. My career is not going well. The last time I performed, somebody threw flowers on me. See, I thought that was more of a funeral thing, but as uh, my buddy Lucas pointed out, usually that's a sign of a good show, you know, like you catch one in your teeth or something. Well, Lucas helped me out on this one. I like this one. I recently performed at a USO show. My career is missing, presumed dead. That's the I'm telling a joke motion. I asked if I could perform for the soldiers. They told me they'd been through enough. I have to figure out how to say that. They told me they'd been through enough. They told me they'd been through enough. I performed recently for Comic Strip Live, and it flatlined. How about this one? This is a good one. You know a set's not going well when people go up to the stage and start kneeling. And then you get to a little bop, bop, bop. One thing I like to do is I warm up sometimes for the show, especially without Brett Davis, and if I only have enough time to tell one joke, I'll just say, you are officially warmed up, and then people forgot that I barely told the joke. Ugh. i got to figure out how to frame this better for the future, but it's gotten 10 likes, and I appreciate that. I like that one column. I got my face on the wall of a comedy club. Turns out I'm missing. So my career is missing. I had a joke back in the day that was, I, I looked at a milk carton that said, missing your career. That's a little conceptual, isn't it? Well, we can still bring it back. That's not going well when people go up to the stage and start kneeling. Andy Kindler is a great, one of my absolute favorites. He said, I'm on Comics to Death Watch. That's funny. Very short, simple to the point. I don't sell my jokes. I pawn them. My word yesterday was sell. I had a couple good ones, but I didn't quite. To me, the, the idea of like selling and money, there's so much there. When you do crowd work, so many people's jobs are about money, and so that's very easy to. Not easy because you get more than one, but uh, I'm saying it, it's easy to run into somebody like that, and then you gotta think on your toes. My audience has put the work into crowd work. Oh, okay. The uh, joke I really wanted to bring back today was one I actually told today and it got a decent response. It's about cruise, uh, like a cruise comedy gig. 
where I said, I recently performed on a cruise ship. I didn't know the Atlantic Ocean had crickets. I also wrote down one diversity night. I kind of think I need to think of a better premise for it, but I, I say I was part of a show's diversity night. Yeah, everybody else had a great set. Maybe I'll say everybody else got laughs. See, that I like, but everybody else had a good set. Everybody else got laughs. And so then I, one thing that I like to do, that I like to open it with, is I would say, I hate being the token in a diversity night because you look at me and I'm a I'm so white, call me a Scientologist, I'm going clear. Talk about my audiences, they're going clear. Uh, let's see what we got. Let's see if we can fully flesh out diversity night. I hate being the token on a club's diversity night. Yeah, everybody else will get laughs. Maybe that's a good one. I can link it to the clubs. Let's get some of that uh, foot powder out of the way. Anybody want to watch the Warriors? Clubs really have. I mean, we, we're in New York, and uh, this is a good yeah joke. People like the yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot to be said about writing out the joke in full, because uh, it really gives you a sense of perspective, how the joke will go, and even though the way you write it is slower than the way you say it, it really helps you wrap your mind around it. Some people ask me, how can you be a one-liner comic? I never understood people that can tell a story. I think that's, that's really hard, to tell a story and to sort of keep the laughs up. I mean, let, let's face it, you know, who cares about uh, Chaboka or whatever? I really like that kneeling joke. My jokes really make you feel at home. Yeah, a funeral home. <laughs> Jokes, my humor. Yeah, maybe humor. <laughs> yeah. Gotta love the ellipses.
My humor really makes you feel at home. Yeah, the funeral home. One joke I like to say is, is after a bomb, I say, that joke really makes you think about leaving. Oh, man. Whew. Starting to close in on an hour. I think we might start wrapping it up. Everyone else on the show is named Todd. Colin, I like that joke. That's pretty conceptual, though. Everyone else on the show is named Todd. You see, I'm named Steve. You know what joke I really like that no one likes? <laughs> All of them, no. Um, I'll say something like, My name's Steve Whalen. That's Irish for no refunds. Now, come on, how funny is that? going to start wrapping it up for tonight. Um, I appreciate everybody who watched. I think I might do this a little bit more often, maybe once or twice a week. Sunday's not a bad day for it. I think Thursday might be a good day for it, too. Um, so, yeah, Steve Whalen, Mr. Jokes.com, Steve Whalen, Mr. Jokes on Instagram, S T E V E W H A L E N M R J O K E S. One thing I'm going to do real quick is I'll show you how my um, joke wall looks at the end of the night. So here we go. This is the web. We started off with the word live, we sort of branched out. A lot of it was about death. Death is in all the cinemas, death sells. Got some unrelated stuff right here. Feel at home, a Home Depot. Man, Colin, you are putting in uh, the one about performing for the soldiers. Go, thank you so much, Kevin. I appreciate it. Um, okay, let's get to that's the section one. I'm, I'm strongly thinking about putting in an unrelated section. Section two is the ideas. Uh, let's see. That punchline was missing, presumed dead. My career's not going well. The last time I performed, somebody threw flowers on me. I recently performed at a USO show. My career is missing, presumed dead. I asked if I could perform for the soldiers. They told me they'd been through enough. I performed recently for Comic Strip Live and it flatlined. You know, a set's not going well when people go up to the stage and start kneeling. I gotta learn how to read. I hate being the token on the club's diversity night. Yeah, everybody else got laughs. And uh, my humor really makes you feel at home. Yeah, the funeral home. Uh, this is the joke hospital, of course. Um, this is a little complex. First of all, you're not booked today. Let's do that. This is going to take a little while, but this is joke number one. Um, I went to this place yesterday. I asked out two women to be here at the exact same time. But it worked out, though. One of them stood me up, and the other said no. Now, crazy if that happened was because that was the original punchline. The original punchline was they both said no, but that would be crazy if that happened. But it was a little, ugh. Um, number two is a classic. Uh, my career is not going well. My joke notebook says printed with recycled material. Um, that joke is famous because at one point I said on my Instagram, I said that joke was an original. Yeah, a Werther's original, and people seem to like that joke. Number three, I actually like. Number three was a recent edition. You can see by the different font. It said, um, this is the joke. Uh, I'm a very controversial comedian. You know, a lot of comics go up to me. They say, you can't say that kind of stuff, Steve. You can't go up there and say that. We have to book you first. Oh, boy. Number four is a good one. I really love this one. A lot of people really like this one. It's, um, take it easy on me, folks. I told my jokes in front of the mirror, and my reflection started looking at its cell phone is a good joke it's really got a number five is um my career's not going well i didn't know an audience could be given a death certificate 
Um, people tell me my jokes are post irony. I say my jokes are post waffle crisp. Number seven is supermarket crowd work. Somebody recently told me they work at a supermarket. And all I could think of was stuff like, oh, you, you ever pick up the chicks there? You got to double bag it. Not great. Uh, sometimes I write down crowd work I have to do. Like somebody will tell me, oh, I'm a painter, and it's kind of hard to think of jokes like that. I should really brush up on it. But uh, thanks, uh, Amito. I love the Superboy outfit, but hey, don't call me Superboy. Um, let's see. Don't. Guy at a show afterwards told me, don't think about quitting comedy. Just do it. Number nine, I write my jokes on yellow paper like Seinfeld or the Son of Sam, mostly like Seinfeld. Uh, I told that joke at a show recently, and... A lady in the crowd said, oh, that's good. That's a good one. So that's basically, it's clever, but not a laugh. Number 10 is a really good joke, but I kind of maybe have to perfect it where number 10 is. I write my jokes on receipts sometimes, and that's pretty weird. I'll hand it back to the lady at the counter. She'll say, why does your receipt say Big League Chew? And what's the deal with Big League Chew? Uh, some people really like that one. Number 11 is Subway. That's more of a, a Subway in general I have to work on. So I have some jokes that I like where it's like, I performed at the Subway. A guy gave me a dollar. His friend said he's just going to spend it on more material. Stuff like that. 12, I did a corporate gig for Staples. I got some good tape out of it. Um, that's 13. I got your notes right here. That one is beyond repair. 14, what's 14? Anti, I call it anti-social media. Eh. Number 15 is sleep mask. What is that? That's, um, I got some great merch. I'm selling ear, um, what is it? I'm selling earbuds and a sleep mask. Yeah. 16, talk to me, baby. That, that joke's been getting a little bit better, but, um, my agent calls me up. He says, Steve, talk to me, baby. I said, Johnny, you called me. He said, oh yeah, and he hung up the phone. Oh boy, there's a lot of jokes in the joke hospital. What is 18 is friendly? I forgot what 18 is. I should have explained it more. Oh well. 17 is AM New York. Went over that earlier today. 19 is getting into, into stand-up. That was a tweet. Um, I watched an episode of Dr. Katz. And I saw a comedian and I thought to myself, I could do this. I was wrong. Yeah. 20 is Crips. I thought of that. Uh, I'm a tough guy. I can be in the Crips. I heard they like blue-collar comedy. All right, so we'll try that one again. Did I write down Crips? I'll try this one. This whole episode should be POV. All right, we're getting close to the ending, folks. I apologize. See, our Eric Tag album is up. Good way to know how long we've been writing. Um, and what's number 20? Charity? <sighs> oh, oh, we have to go over the tag. Okay. Real quick, these are jokes I'm bringing back, so look for them in the near future. A joke bombs, I say, I'm dying up here, point to an attractive woman, can I get some mouth to mouth? My jokes are killing on Google+, Plus. you might have seen that today. Number three, I'm tweeting tomorrow, which was the episode of The Twilight Zone where the guy's so good at billiards he has to play people forever, except it's a roast battler. I'll have to work on that one. Four is Soldiers, we just did that. Post Irony, we just did that. Memorial Sloan, um, we, we talked about a lot of these. Check Bounce Diversity Night, Missing Your Career, Crickets. Okay, we went over all of these. Folks, uh... I really appreciate spending time with you right now writing. I hope you have a great day. Um, go to an open mic or whatever, tell a joke, who cares? Uh, no, I'm kidding, I love it. I love this crowd. I love this live feed. I live this feed. All right, folks, have a good one. I appreciate it. I'll probably be doing more of this in the near future. All right, bye.